Good morning, everyone. So I want to talk today about how do you own your feelings and not the stories in your life? Because there's a lot of danger when we start to create and own the stories that we create in our head that aren't based on data or facts um, in our lives. So I want to give you a great example. So I was talking to a friend yesterday um, at my house. We're getting ready to watch our, you know, The Voice and um, Blacklist. And as we're talking, we start talking about social media. And have you ever had those people that reach out on social media, whatever social media app it is for you, where they respond like three or four or five times and you just haven't had a chance to respond yet? And when you haven't responded, what happens is all of a sudden you get a nasty gram. I call it a nasty gram, right? You get a nasty gram about why you didn't respond, but you haven't been around. So uh, raise your hand, even if you're on a video, raise your hand if that's happened to you, because I know a lot of us can relate. So yesterday, this happened to me. So I was in meetings all day, I was working, and I was busy, and I hadn't had time to respond on social media. I'll try to accept people and stuff, but I haven't really had time to have conversation. And I, the afternoon comes around, I get off work, and I get on social media, and all of a sudden, this person responds back to me and says, after they were sent five messages in a row, and it's like, well, I can see that you don't practice what you preach. And at first, right, you're kind of a little taken back. And I want to talk about why people in life do that. Because, so you obviously know I use every experience I go through to tell, um, somebody's going to be part of the video one day. <laughs> so here's what happens. That person sent a bunch of messages, didn't get a response that he or she wanted out of their life, right? And what did they do? Instead of owning the feeling of how it really made them feel, they created a story in their head. And the story is attached to either their baggage or their background, and they either, and it made them feel mad. So what do they do? Instead, instead of owning the feeling, which is, hey, when you don't respond, it makes me upset, it makes me mad, it makes me feel like you don't want to talk to me, and I've seen what you post, and I'd really like the opportunity to get to know you more. That's owning your feelings. Instead, the person owned the story. The story was, well, this person obviously doesn't want to talk to me. This person doesn't like me for whatever reason. And so I'm going to get nasty. And so sent a message saying, well, I can see you don't practice what you preach. And there's danger in owning our stories because we always respond in a destructive and a negative way that breaks the relationship down. So you see this in companies. So if leaders sometimes don't get the, somebody doesn't turn something in on time or a salesperson doesn't meet their, their sales goal, right? Or two people aren't getting along in the organization. Instead of having conversations, sometimes I work with leaders that create a story in their head about why this dynamic's happening with nothing to, nothing to base it on. And when you make decisions based off your stories rather than the emotions and the facts, then it's destructive. Relationships, right? Someone doesn't open the car door for you. So you, you're, in your head, you create a story that they don't care about you or you don't mean a lot to them. Or someone doesn't respond to your text message right away or someone doesn't call you for a day or two after you meet. We create all these stories in our head instead of owning the feeling. So I hope what you get this feeling is, if you want to be a better communicator in your life, both personally and professionally, you got to own the feelings that come with it, right? To say, you know what, when you don't open the car door for me, it really just makes me feel like you don't care about me. It makes me feel special and I would love it if you did it. Or as a leader in a company, when I see the way that you all collaborate every day and that you always are going back and forth, it makes me feel like you don't value each other and you don't value the culture of this company. And I have an issue with that and I want to talk about how we're going to resolve that, right? When we don't own the feelings, we create stories. The stories are destructive because sometimes we have nothing to base that on. And if we have the conversations about how the feelings actually make us feel, we find out information that we probably wouldn't have known previously. And then we can make much healthier, better decisions in our lives. So I know every one of you have experienced something like that, where either you created the story in your head, or someone, you did something and someone else created a story in their head, and it got blown out of proportion. So I hope this gives you something to think about. Remember, own the feelings, not the stories. That's how you become a better communicator. All right? I hope you have a wonderful day. No one tells you today that they believe in you. Please know that I believe in you. I can't wait to talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.